Hello, welcome to our show, and today we are going to talk about what happened to AR and the VR. And uh, we're so honored to have our speaker, uh, the founder and the captain of Founder Space, Mr. Steve Hoffman. Great to be here, Diana. Yeah, thank you, Steve. And so uh, AR and the VR has been so hot for a while, but seems um, not many companies really making money. So what happened to AR and the VR? It's been a surprise, especially to many venture capitalists who put a lot of money into these AR and VR startups. We all know Magic Leap, right? They raised huge amounts of money, a billion dollars, and Google was one of the big investors. So people believed in this, and there yes. was Oculus and all these others. The problem is this, that the demand from consumers for AR and VR has not been there. Mm. Most people don't want to put on one of these clunky headsets, right? It's not comfortable. It's a lot of work. You know, honestly, mm -hmm. people tend to do what's simplest and what provi provides the most utility, meaning I get, I, it's very easy to do. So if there's two ways to accomplish a task, right? Mm -hmm. One, you can just pick up your phone and do it in two seconds. Get on WeChat or Facebook or buy a product, you know, from JD.com or Amazon on your phone, you'll do it. If you have to put on this AR or VR headset and actually navigate through this 3D world, that takes a lot of time. It's cumbersome. Mm -hmm. And people thought, oh, that's kind of cool, right? It is cool, especially for gaming and stuff like that. But to actually do many of the things people want to do, the phone is a much better tool. It's simply more convenient, easier, faster, everything. Well, sounds like you know, AR and VR are not really as popular as people thought. So what are the most promising areas for AR and VR nowadays? Well, the one area that consumers like, but they haven't totally fallen in love with... Is that game? Gaming. Yeah, you gaming, got it. yes. Gaming. People, mm -hmm. you know, I've early on tried mm -hmm. you know, some of the first... A VR games, mm -hmm. and they are really compelling. I try it, I really like it. Yeah, they're great. I enjoy it, yes. Now, <laughs> some people get sick when they do it. Mm -hmm. Motion sickness, yes. because not, I didn't have that problem, mm -hmm. but that holds some people back. Mm -hmm. And other people just want a game in, in a simple mm -hmm. format, like on their phone, or their TV is enough for them. But still, there's a lot of promise there. As for other consumer apps, very difficult to get people to shop, to get people to socialize and do other things. They would rather do those with their phone, honestly. The best areas I see for AR and VR in the short term, before the technologies mature further, are business to business and enterprise level. So if you have a business that actually can derive a lot of value out of creating one of these simulations, maybe for worker safety training, or for on-the-job training on how to do things, or for remote repairs, things like that. Or even surgery with, um, with uh, AR, they're doing that now. Then the cost of the device, the cost of and putting on the device, mm -hmm. the hassle of putting it on, isn't that much. Oh. Because it provides a lot of value to that business. Mm -hmm. So startups in those areas still have enormous potential. So many people are still working on AR and VR and invest on this. So when will AR and VR actually making the impact? So the impact will be felt at different times in different sectors. So some sectors will mature sooner, like uh, medical technology. We can see AR experiments going right on right now with surgery and other medical procedures that seem very promising. Also in worker training, in industrial settings, in certain business applications. Those will come first. But it will be a while before everybody will be walking around with like a VR headset on, mm -hmm. or everybody will be in front of their TV, you know, with, with VR and AR. This will take more time. Mm -hmm. And I see the time horizon stretching out. So some businesses will start to become viable in the coming year. Others especially social networks and, and shopping with these things, things like that, those will actually happen probably in five or more years. Mm. That is my prediction. And the real turning point will be when they get these VR 
and AR devices so small you hardly notice them. Mm -hmm. Like whether they're contact lenses that Google is now working mm -hmm. on or some other device that's placed like directly stimulates your brain mm -hmm. and creates sort of a, a VR or AR experience mm -hmm. through your brain, through your skull without any device at all. Like it, it can beam it in there or you can have a, a little chip behind your ear that, that simulates this. At that point, it'll go crazy, mm -hmm. right? Because then our whole world will blend these simulations, these virtual simulations with what we're really doing and the true potential will be realized. Yes, just imagine someday when we do the show, just move our hands and you know, the 3D picture or motion will come out. Right, no show yes. will ever have a physical stage, yes. right? All of us, and even our lives will mm -hmm. be like shows, right? Yes. We'll be broadcasting and interacting with all these virtual objects all around it and kind of the dream investors had originally, they put so much money into, will be realized. Mm, okay. Okay, so that AR and the VR arrow will come someday, maybe in a few years. Yes. Okay, thank you, Steve, and thanks, everybody, for watching.